Namaste and a heartfelt welcome to everyone to our third global gathering on the topic of emerging from lock lockdown with clarity and purpose. And wow, what a week it's been, hasn't it? I, I you can just feel it's almost like the world was a pressure cooker right now. We had one set of issues that we were all facing when we were in lockdown. But a totally set of emotions are arising now as we are emerging from lockdown. And for those of you who are coming in who've never been to the journey, the journey was originally born from my own direct experience from healing from a basketball-sized tumor in 1992. And what was developed out of that process was out of my own healing journey was a process for everyone to go on a very practical down-to-earth emotional journey inside their bodies to get access to something that are called cell memories. And what we know about the cells inside the body and also about our emotions is that when we feel a strong emotion and we repress it, like a lot of people are doing right now, it's very pent up. So when we feel that strong emotion come up and we repress it, it releases a quantifiable biochemistry into our bloodstream, which will go to certain cell receptors and block them, rendering the cells incapable of communicating with the rest of the cells in the body. And if over time illness happens, it happens where the cell receptors are blocked. What's also known to be true is when we feel our emotions very openly, and freely, and naturally, like a child does, our cell receptors remain open. And so what the journey process allows you to do is go on a journey inside yourself to really get access to these trapped emotions, these pent up fears, this anger, this frustration, and not only to, to get access to it, but to go through a very deeply and profoundly clearing and healing process, coming to an understanding of what has taken place in your life, and ultimately forgiveness of life, of each other, of yourself, so that when new cells are born, they're born devoid of that old consciousness as new regenerative cells. Now, let's move the camera forward. We're here now, over 26 years later, and now the journey became an international bestseller. The book that I first wrote, we, we've written uh, five books in our roster of books. And, and it's being now used by medical doctors, by psychiatrists as a method to get to the emotional corollary of illnesses. And obviously for people from all walks of life to clear whatever's blocking them or holding them back or keeping them small and sort of taking the lampshade off and coming home to the love, the peace, the joy, the freedom that is your own essence. And so it's very deeply, profoundly liberating and healing work. And for those of you who've already been to the journey and have experienced it, I know that you're joining this because what I do in these global gatherings is I welcome people to share what are some of the issues that have been coming up for you right now? What are the emotional issues and themes? And then I design spontaneously bespoke work for all of us co-creatively and collectively to undergo, to help clear these themes and these issues that have been emerging at this time. And I'm sure you're aware, if you've been reading the news at all, that you know before there was a lot of fear about corona there was a lot of fear of what if we emerge from lockdown and it we have another resurgence but that's not where the world is right now right now because lockdown is is easing very slowly people in countries where they've already you know the curve is flattened and it's gone down and there's barely any corona happening anymore are starting to get frustrated and trapped feeling and a longing to be able to travel to see their loved ones, to go to other countries. And is beginning, you know, I read in the New York Times one journalist saying, we're just over it. 
you know, we're over Netflix, we're over being trapped, we're over being not being able to see our loved ones, we're just plain over it. And, you know, of course, this past week that what happened with Floyd George in Minneapolis and, you know, with the policemen, policemen who then kneeled, one kneeled on his neck and three others kneeled on his body and he died. And as a result, all this pent up emotion, this tinderbox of feeling trapped that America's feeling because, you know, certain states in America, they barely have any any corona. And for them, it just feels like there's this big hoax going on, you know, and still others where they have a lot of corona, you know, places like New York City, where if you're a health worker and you had to work through that time where it was at its peak, you know, they're not understanding. How could you not understand all the hundreds of thousands of lives, you, you know, that have have passed as a result of corona. And so there's different factions of people around the world, you know, even in Australia, where they've really kept the fatalities per million way down. Like I'm here in Greece, we've kept it down to 17 per million. But Australia has, has kept it down to eight per million, where, you know, other countries are in the hundreds per million. And so in countries where it's lower, it just feels like lockdown just can't ease fast enough. And yet still the states are closed. You can't go from one state to another in Australia. And it's, you know, they're bordering each other. And so there's now starting to be a pen of frustration over that. And in America, with what happened with Floyd George, I mean, obviously, you're aware of the protests happening. There's curfew in several states and in several cities and the protests have erupted violently and they it's in fires and now the military has been called in and i don't think it would have been such a tinderbox it wouldn't be such an explosive eruption had it not been that we're emerging from lockdown and the frustration is building and the truth of the matter is, what people don't understand is that they're not just feeling frustration from right now. Whatever emotions are coming up, they're likely to be from a long time ago. That sometimes something happened where you, uh, let, let's say, you know, uh, you've got rage coming up right now. And you're driving along on the highway and someone cuts you off and boom, up comes the rage. Now, they, that person didn't put the rage inside of you. The rage was already inside of you. It was already stored inside your cells. And then what happened was something pushed your buttons and boom, up came the rage. And so these old emotional issues that I spoke about at the beginning, where we felt a strong emotion, and then none of us were given a manual, what do you do in the face of a strong emotion? What do most of us do? Smoke it away, drink it away, get on Netflix, get on Facebook, call a friend, get on Zoom. I mean, go for a walk, go for a run, anything to avoid feeling that emotion. And so when we feel that strong emotion and we shut it down, it releases that biochemistry and gets stored in our cells. Then we have a situation like this where we're all in a tinderbox, you know, in a very explosive environment where we're feeling trapped. Something pushes your buttons. In this case, George uh, Floyd George did. Boom, boom, and up comes this emotion. And so I thought that one of the things that we need to deal with right now that we collectively as a humanity are kneeling to de needing to deal with are these pent up emotions. And I have to tell you something, they're not stored in your mind. They are stored in your body. And so I really would like to undergo a process today where we can learn in a gentle way, first of all, how to befriend our bodies, how to go inside our bodies, and 
to allow our emotions to come freely, naturally, just to embrace them. It's the pent up ones that we then repress that are the problem. There is actually no problem with feeling emotion. The truth of the matter is, and I'll share with you how this is possible, that if you allow emotions to come freely and naturally, no emotion can last very long. It can only last a few seconds. It will come up, it'll be felt, and it will fall away. But it's only when you add to it a story to justify why you feel the way you feel that you keep that emotion in play. And so you've heard the expression that which you resist persists. And part of the way we try to resist feeling emotions is we like to project the blame for what we're feeling elsewhere. And that is for sure what is happening in America right now with all the protests going on. It's like, oh, it's all coming up and poof, the explosion's happening. We are projecting it outside of ourselves. But if instead you just open, you will find, if you really stay still, close your eyes, welcome the emotion, let it really come flooding, you will find that if you go into the core of that emotion, there will be a peace that you will find in the core of all emotions. And that we actually have many layers of emotions. And so I'd like to welcome you, whether you've been through the journey, it's time for us to do a gentle welcome. And then I would like to take everyone else into a deeper teaching of how actually we have a surface motion, but actually that is just the surface. There are deeper and deeper layers of emotions. And if you are willing to surrender and open deeply into the very core, into the deepest layers of these emotions, there in the core of your being, you will find this peace that is your own essence, that is the love inside of you, that is your own soul. But the way to open into that peace is not by, you know, making peaceful pictures or affirmations. The way to open into true peace in a direct experiential way is to open to the core of your worst emotions. There, experientially, directly, you will open into the infinite intelligence. This part of you that makes your heart beat and your eyes shine, and your inner grow. And it's there at the deepest level of the being that you will find this peace that you are seeking. And I feel like we're all seeking it right now. But as long as we're, you know, running away from our emotions, as long as we're sweeping them under the carpet, as long as we're projecting them outward in blame against everybody else, as long as we're trying to tell a story to to justify why we feel the emotions. All of our strategies, avoidance, all they do is perpetuate the emotion. And so this is kind of an, a wake up call to all of us that it's time to get real. It's time to be willing to feel in a safe and gentle way what's really going on inside of you. Now, I've got Gabby here on the computer. She's the managing director for The Journey, which is our international seminar company, where we are, normally I give The Journey intensive live around the world. And I, I um, obviously, I've been in lockdown for nearly 11 weeks now. And we've been in quarantine, police enforced lockdown. So I've had to really stretch to open. And for the first time ever, and I'm really thrilled that this is possible, in 26 years of offering the Journey Intensive live, in person, on a weekend, and in 39 countries around the world, and it's translated in 24 languages, I'm finally going to be offering a live stream online event of the Journey Intensive two-day immersion in this profoundly liberating and healing work 
coming mid-June, so in just a couple of weeks' time. And in, it'll be in Europe in mid-June, and then the week after that, it'll go to America, so that it's on that time zone. And, and then a week after that, it'll go to Australia and New Zealand, so it's on that time zone. So you have a chance, and you have tremendous uh, trainer support, where while you're doing the process work, you will have a trainer who will be assigned to you, a, a journey practitioner, who is a senior practitioner to support you as you're undergoing the deep process work. You'll get live teachings from me, guided introspections, and this profoundly liberating work. And so it just feels like now, more than ever, it's important that we clear these pent-up emotions the, and get to the cell memories that are stored inside which are causing our reactions to be quite explosive right, right now. And so it's, it's beautiful and liberating work. But until we get there, we're still two weeks away. And so until we get to the journey intensive, I wanted to do these global gatherings so we could do some clearing works to clear ourselves and also prepare ourselves for really diving into the deep work of the journey. And so I'm going to ask Gabby if anyone has written in some of the emotional issues that are coming up for you right now. And uh, if you would, Gabby, uh, share some of what people are, are writing in, if they're writing in. At the so moment. somebody, the first comment was that somebody said she's eating and doesn't know how to stop eating. Yeah. Um, somebody else said, I've uh, been isolated for 10 weeks so far, frightened to go out. Um, I've suffered from agoraphobia 25 years ago for mm -hmm. two years, don't want to revisit that again. When I return to work, I will be in a clothing superstore. Um, Yvonne, okay, hold, hold on, let's start with the first one and let's do them in order. So yeah. the, the first one? The first one was, um, uh, I can't remember who said it, but she said she doesn't seem to be able to stop eating. Yeah. Now, I've just spoken about all the strategies that we have for avoiding emotions, smoking away, drinking away, get on Netflix, get on Facebook, call a friend, uh, and eating is one of them. When we eat larger amounts of food, what it does, and you've heard the expression, comfort food, and it literally suppresses your emotions. And yes, it's just an avoidance strategy, and of course I understand this. No one was given a manual, how do you cope? you know, where you're in lockdown for all this time and your emotions are coming up. And, and of course, you know, eating is one of the strategies for avoiding it. And so, yes, I promise you, we will address this as we do a gentle welcome of our emotions. And, and then I uh, will welcome you. One of the things that you should know watching this is that you should get on thejourney.com. And on there, my first um, more than a million um, bestseller, uh, that the journey book is available for you to download online where you can not only go through the experience with me, but get access to the process work so that we're not just doing clearing work here, but you can actually start to, to experience some of the very liberating process of work. I mean, right now, and even in Tel Aviv, we have two hospitals, medical hospitals, where they have a cancer unit in one and a heart unit in another. And after you've done had your operations, you will spend a week in a recovery unit where, in addition to the nutritional support and other kinds of support, they are giving the journey process to get to the emotional corollary of what is co-created the illness. And it's based, of course, on what is happening in the field of cellular healing. And so the journey helps you to get to the emotional root cause of what is causing your surface issue of reaching for food. As a matter of fact, you know what I'd like everybody to try right now? Okay, she's talking about reaching for food. But just look at all the ways you've been avoiding feeling. How you've been reading and um, watching television and running if you're allowed out of the house or you've been... You've been on Facebook and Netflix, and you may have been drinking it away with a lot more alcohol consumption than you've had. And, you know, you've been doing things that you know, behavior that you know is not healthy for you, but you're doing it anyway. All 
in an effort to avoid feeling emotion. And so I just want you, all of you, to uh, just do a divine experiment right now, just to join me. Just close your eyes and go to a recent time, a recent memory where you've either been reaching for the food or having another glass of wine or choosing to get on the television or calling a, a friend on Zoom or, you know, where you're aware that some emotion is coming up and you're do, taking action to avoid feeling it. So right now, even though this may feel odd, speak out loud into the room what it was like when you took an action to avoid the feeling. Now the person who shared the thing about her, her um, eating all the time. I'd like you to go back to a time recently where you reached for food and in spite of knowing you shouldn't do it, you did it anyway. So everybody go back to the exact moment, to that exact moment where you did a behavior that you knew was not supporting you, but you did it anyway. So just try this divine experiment. Go to the exact moment. Just step into the picture where you're in that moment where you're reaching for the wine, you're reaching for the booze, you're reaching for a cigarette, you're getting on Net Netflix, you're reaching for the uh, to get on, on Facebook, whatever it is. And you've already been and done those things recently, but you're doing it again. <laughs> so go to that exact moment. And just roll the cameras back to that little millisecond before you did the behavior. So roll the cameras back in time to that tiny millisecond where you had the impulse to do this thing to avoid feeling. Roll the cameras back to that impulse. And now roll the cameras back to it, to just before the impulse arose to do this thing that wasn't supporting you. And stretch time. Right before that impulse to do the behavior, just open up. What were you feeling at that time? Just speak it out loud into your room. It has to be done out loud. Otherwise, it just stays inside your head. Just speak it out loud. Right before the impulse to do the behavior that you know is not supporting you happened, just what were you feeling? Open and stretch time. And just speak out loud, what were you feeling? And open even deeper than that. What was even deeper than that surface emotion? What was the emotion that you were feeling? It was even deeper than that surface emotion. It's in the core of that surface emotion. And as you open in the core of that surface emotion, what was even deeper? What was even deeper? And just speak that out loud into your room. Okay, let's take a nice deep breath in. Let it out. And open your eyes. What were the kinds of emotions that were driving you to do this behavior that you knew wasn't supporting you, but you did it anyway? Prior to the impulse, what was coming up for you? Just write that in to Gabby on the computer. Often I find when we're doing a behavior that we wish we didn't do, that we know is not healthy for us, but we're doing it anyway, obviously it's an avoidance strategy. And it's important that we be willing to open with and feel what was the emotion that I was avoiding feeling. Because we're all of us on the run from that emotion. And we use different strategies to get away from it. And what I found is that true peace can only be found by opening 
and allowing the emotion to be felt. So what's coming up, Gabby? The first one that has shown up is emptiness, fear of abandonment, anger, restless, yeah. helpless, frustration, anger, fear, anxiety, anxiety of the future, okay. energy loss, to be alone, sadness. These are all strong issues. And the rejection, thing, fear of rejection, fear losing of rejection. my integrity, disconnection, worthless. These are very strong emotions that are there. And what I've learned about it, you cannot run from these deep emotions because they are like a tiger. They will hunt you down. And the only option you have when it comes to emotions is turn and offer yourself into the mouth of the tiger and to really open into the core of that. And so this is why I'm wanting you to learn how to befriend your emotions in a gentle way, how to embrace them, how to allow them, and to even go deeper into the core of them to find the peace that's available inside. Otherwise, you're just going to be doing everything you can that when you're at the peak of these emotions, you're shutting them down. And I don't even want to tell you what happened. You know, when, when 9-11 happened, and, and of course, those thousands of people died and their families, an interesting thing happened. We went to New York City and New York is my hometown. And we went to New York and we did journey outreach there. We brought journey outreach there to take people through the journey intensive so that they could clear these deeply stored cell memories, you know, because no one gave them a manual. They're feeling this trauma of what just happened to them. They've lost their loved one in the twin towers. And I know what's going to happen. They're going to shut down. The biochemistry is going to be released and it's going to go to their cell receptors. And later on, it's going to show up as illness. And so, of course, I went there. We did a 250 person free event for people who had lost their loved ones in the twin towers because I didn't want it to show up as illness further down the line. And sure enough, uh, 10 years later, it was in the um, New York Times that the American government kept tabs on those who lost loved ones in the uh, Twin Towers. And they had aft off the Richter scale cancer. And so the reason I'm sharing this with you is it's a damaging thing that while all of our emotions are coming up, and we're getting pent up and we're shutting them down. It's a dangerous thing to do because it's going to go somewhere inside your body. Of course it is. It makes common sense to you. And so uh, my prayer is, is that we learn how to healthily open and embrace our emotions, even go into the core of them and find the peace that's inside of them. So it doesn't show up like it did with those people who had lost loved one in the Twin Towers 10 years down the line is some illness. It's why they're using this work in, in hospitals to get to the emotional root cause of what's co-creating the illness. It's why for the first time in 26 years, I'm giving the journey intensive as a live stream. You know, we've done many things, uh, you know, a virtual uh, live streaming, but never the journey intensive. And it's why I'm so passionate about you getting this work to clear this so it doesn't show up as illness down the line. So uh, what was the next one? That was I, well, I have something here that is really kind of belongs to here right now. Okay. So Ida, for, Ida just said, she says, I feel free. I'm not anxious at all. I'm in trust. I'm so thankful that I came to the journey in 2009. It was the best thing that ever happened in my life. And then I've got Anya kind of two levels down. And she's saying, it's such a strange feeling. I know the strong feeling when I am in the flow of source energy. Why does my body choose to step out of this loving current? What is the self-sabotage? Okay, well, I'd say to the second one, you know, one woman saying I'm constantly in flow and, and just at peace and joy. And it was, you know, the journey intensive was the best thing I did in 2009. And the other woman is saying, you know, I, I know what this flow is, this presence of grace, this peace is, and why does my body step out of it? Your body doesn't step out of it. Your body can't step out of it. It's your mind that does. 
you, you the there's no way to step out of your own soul and you know this that your own soul is this vast boundless presence of truth of freedom of love that's pervading all of existence and there's no way for you to step out of your own soul but it is possible for your mind to go somewhere else and so the journey is an invitation to transcend the mind and get in touch with our bodies in touch with our hearts and with our beings and open into this essence that is your own being into the love the joy the freedom that is your own essence so someone from 2009 who took the journey intensive is living in that grace and trust and love it is possible for everyone to live in that and she obviously fell in love with truth she fell in love with her own soul and as the limitations fall away and the lies fall away the blocks fall away more and more of the truth of who you are is available and is here shining that's why i mentioned early on in this is this whole global gathering that the journey helps take the lampshade off your light so i'm i'm wanting to go now into a gentle welcome and kind of teach us how to have baby steps towards being allowed to welcome emotions to discover what they are most of us have a very unhealthy relationship to emotions and instead i'm going to welcome that we we open to a, a healthier relationship to our emotions where we learn how to embrace them how to allow them how to give our emotions a voice how to listen to ourselves listen to our bodies so that we can participate in our own healing process and and feel at home in ourselves so again i'd like to ask you to join me and let's all just we're just going to do a short i don't know 10 15 minute meditation here so um it's time to make sure you turn off all phones and everything and you're just here present and let's all take a nice deep breath in letting it out closing the eyes and just becoming aware of your own awareness that your own presence is vast and open free and endless in front of you that your own essence is infinitely free kind that your own presence is spacious and free all sides and taking a deep breath in now of openness and the willingness just to go on this mini journey where you're just welcoming your emotions breathing that into the room awareness and trust in yourself and life and each other breathing in an ocean of trust and letting everything soften and relax letting your body soften and relax your being your heart open and letting your heart be as wide as the world wide enough to welcome all the feelings that live inside of you even your ancestors emotion that's how vast this love is this field of grace is and now taking your awareness inside the body and you know our bodies you already know this they're they're like a container and they're full of all kinds of emotions and some of our emotions they're like little kids you know some of our feelings they're loud and attention seeking always trying to get our attention and others of our feelings they're like a shy 
who scare little kids and they hide from us. And some of our emotions, we've rejected them so many times that they don't even come up anymore. They hide beneath lids and behind closed doors and they're scared of us. And so right now, putting out a heartfelt welcome to all the emotions that live inside of you and just say that for once you're willing to be open to them. For once, you're willing to feel what's really here. For once, you're going to be present and allow them. And you're going to listen to yourself. Just make that commitment to your body and to your feelings. And now, locating in your body some place where you're feeling a little bit of tension or stress or holding or hiding or contraction going on. Locate that area right now. And once you've located that area, let's all of us together take a nice deep breath in of acceptance and flooding that area with acceptance. Letting it soften that area and marinate that area and tenderize that area and open that area. And if there were a feeling starting to arise out of that area, what might that feeling be? And just whisper out loud into the room whatever feeling it is that might be coming up for you right now. It might be as quiet as a whisper, it might be quite strong. But if there were a feeling, just breathing acceptance into this area of your body, what might be the feeling be that's arising right now? I've got a, a mixture of scaredness mixed with sadness simultaneously, which can happen sometimes. A couple of emotions come together. But I don't know what you've got coming up. And now, give this part of your body a voice. If it could speak and had words, what would it say right now? And speak those words out in your room. How do those words make you feel emotionally? So if this part of the body could speak and have words, speak those words out loud in your room right now. And as you listen to the words hit your own ears, how do they make you feel? It's not enough to let it mill around inside of you. It just stays inside of you. You need to really let it up and speak it out. Or perhaps a picture is spontaneously arising. If there is some sort of memory or a picture showing up, step into it. How are you feeling in that picture? Or maybe there's a lid here over the emotion, sort of a lid of numbness where, or, or a cover some way that you can't get access to the feeling that's stored there in that part of the body. If that's the case, take hold of that lid and as if peeling the lid off a can of peanuts, take hold of it and lift it off. Take hold of this cover, this lid, and lift it off. What's hiding here? How are you feeling? Just welcoming whatever's here and also whatever's not here. Taking a deep breath in of acceptance, flooding that area with acceptance, letting it soften, and now come to neutral inside of yourself. And locate another part of your body where there may be a little tension or stress or holding or hiding or contraction going on. 
Locate that area right now. And take a deep breath of acceptance. Flood that area with acceptance. Let it soften that area. Marinating it and tenderizing it and opening it. And if an emotion were starting to come up out of that area, what might that feeling be? Might be as quiet as it is. So if there were feelings starting to come up out of that area, what might that feeling be? I have a feeling of being choked up. Just like I'm strangled, like I can't allow the feeling. And I, I just feel choked with that. But I don't know what you're feeling right now. Just welcoming whatever's here and whatever's not here. And if there were a feeling just beginning to emerge right now, speak it out loud into your room. What is the feeling that's starting to come up? Be really open and present. It may be extremely quiet. Just welcome it out. If it had words you could speak, what would this feeling say to you right now? Let the words come up. Give it a voice. Let any words that need to come up, come up. And as you listen to yourself speaking the words, how does it make you feel emotion? Just welcoming that emotion. And if there's a lid here or a cover, take hold of it and lift it off. What's hiding underneath here? If there's a picture there, step into it. How are you feeling in that picture? Welcoming whatever's here and whatever's not here. Taking a deep breath in of acceptance. Flooding that area with acceptance, letting it soften. And now come to neutral again. And finding yet a third area of your body where there may be a little tension or stress or holding or hiding going on. Locate that area right now. Take a deep breath in of acceptance. Flood that area with acceptance. Let it soften and open and be tenderized and marinated. And if there were feelings just tenderly starting to come up out of that area, what might that feeling be? It may not be at all what you're expecting, so just stay open to whatever it is. It may be as quiet as we expect. So just soften the area, really open the area. If it had an emotion coming up, what is that feeling? Speak it out loud. And how does that feeling, as you listen to the words, make you feel? Give that area a voice. If it had words or sounds that it wanted to say, how do the sounds or words make you feel? Emotion. Speak out the words out loud. Just welcome them. Embrace them. If there's a picture, step into it. Or maybe there's like a closed door somewhere. A door that you haven't been willing to open in a long time. If there is, go over to that door and open the door. What's hiding behind that door? Just welcoming whatever's here. Whatever feelings here, pictures here, words here. Welcome it all. And now take a deep breath in of acceptance, flooding this area with acceptance. And then come to neutral. And now just 
putting out an invitation to your body that for the rest of today, or even just for the rest of this session that we're going to share together, you're going to be tender towards your emotions. You're going to be welcoming of your emotions. You're going to be embracing of your emotions. Allow your emotions. Allow them to come and allow them to go. Let words come, let the words go. Pictures come, pictures go. And you're just going to be present to what's here right now. And check out how your body feels now that you've made a commitment to yourself. That you're going to be open and present with yourself. And you're going to start allowing emotions here. And feeling them. And welcoming them into this embrace of love. And allowing your own presence to be vast and spacious. Free and endless in front of you. Boundless and spacious. Behind. And let's be free to all sides. How this below the skylight above. And just resting here. As if you're at the very bottom in the fathomless depth. an ever deepening ocean of love, of peace, acceptance, take your eyes to breath in, letting it out. And another nice deep breath in. And sigh out. And continuing to rest so steep in this love as this love. So that eyes open or eyes closed. Same sense. And ah, letting it out. And we can open our eyes now into this love. And it's a beautiful thing to start befriending your body, to start listening to your body. And I'm welcoming you to write what you want to share. And I'll talk until you're able to do that. But one of the things that I found is if you are willing to go into the core of your worst emotion, there you'll find a piece that you are seeking. And I remember the first time I, I heard a, a teacher, a master say this. You know, being a therapist in life, I thought, a lot of crock of shit that is, you know. You know, I mean, if you if you have anguish, let's say, or desperation or terror or fear, how are you going to find peace in that emotion? But I decided I would go home and try a divine experiment. And I chose the emotion that I was most hooked by an emotion that I felt that no matter how much work I'd done on it, it still kept coming up for me. And it was a feeling of being driven to have to do what was right, to care for people, to lift them up, to be there for them. Even if a client called me at four in the morning and they had depression, boom, I was out of bed and had to be there for them. And even when I got sick, I still I had to be there for people, to, to lift them up, to care for them, to help them, to serve them. And okay, it's a wonderful thing to want to care for people, but not if it's moved from a place of the natural way that children like to help each other to a place of I almost was obsessed by it, driven by that. And so one day I decided I would do a divine experiment. 
And I went to my answer machine and I decided I would take five days and go into silence and find out if indeed this, uh, what the master had said was true, was actually true. That if I went into the core of my worst emotion, there I'd find the peace that I was seeking. And so I went to my answering machine and I said, hey, it's Brandon. I'm taking five days to go on a silent retreat. I didn't know how long it was going to take to do this. And please leave a message to the sound of the beep and I'll be back to you on Monday. And so I went over to the big easy chair in our living room. And when I sat down and I thought, well, what is the emotion that is here? And even the thought of not being able to be there if people called. And it was like panic started to rise. You know, what about my daughter? What if she's in an auto accident? What about my husband? He's on the East Coast giving a stop. What if that client who has suicidal depression calls and I'm not there to answer the phone? And oh, all this panic came up. And I thought, Brandon, you've been on silent retreats at monasteries in India where you haven't been reachable for three months. You're just panicking because you're afraid to face your worst emotion. And I got that part of, of all this help and giving loving was an avoidance strategy that I had of meeting this fear. And so I thought, okay, I'm not going to make any phone calls to help people, nor am I going to receive phone calls to help people. I'm just going to see if I can find this so-called peace. It's in the core of all emotions. And so I sat down and I said, so what is the feeling that's here? And boom, up came the fear. And I didn't know this, but I had fear of feeling fear. And I thought, I'm going to go into meditation, you know. And so I went into meditation. And for those of you that meditate, how successful is your meditation with your mind going a million miles a minute? <laughs> And I realized I was using even meditation as an escape mechanism, as an avoidance of feeling that fear. Caught myself in my own game, and I said, you're going to have to face and actually feel this emotion. And so I said, okay, I'm going to stop that avoidance strategy and feel the emotion. And i got to tell you, that fear was so strong, I thought I wanted to jump out of my skin. I wanted to jump out of my seat. And and but I'd made a vow that I was going to stay still and see this process through and I wasn't going to distract myself from it. And some little tiny part of me just let go and I stopped fighting the emotion. I stopped trying to analyze it. I stopped trying to figure it out. I stopped trying to giving a story to it. I just stopped. And I let go. And I fell from this fear into a feeling of profound guilt, a crushing guilt. All the people I could have helped, never helped, didn't help. And something inside of me was getting it. Stop fighting it, as painful as this is. Stop fighting it. And so some little part of me let go, and I fell into a deep, loneliness which many of you are speaking about right now that there's a real loneliness that even though we're on zoom and we're, we're calling our friends it's, it's not the same and this was a loneliness that i felt like the whole room was filled with loneliness and like the walls were lonely and i was lonely and the air was lonely and something inside of me just let go and I fell into a feeling of kind of a helpless hopelessness. And I thought, you know what? If there's no person here offering our help to other people and no help is needed and no one is receiving help, then what's the point of even living? Who am I without this helping game? And when I asked the question, who am I, without this helping game, I mean, do I even exist? I started to free fall and dissolve 
into a vast field of black nothingness. And there was a black hole in the middle of it. And I thought, I am not going in there. Because if I go there, I could cease to exist. I, I, could, I could go crazy. I could lose my mind. I could, I could die. And I now call that area the unknown zone. And I didn't know this, but we all have fear of the unknown. And of course, in this black nothingness where I didn't even seem to exist, you know, all this fear was coming up. And I made myself rigid and stuck. And I thought for dear life I was not going to give in. Let's see what happened. Every time you relax into the core of an emotion, you will fall into a deeper one and an even deeper one. I was sure as heck not going to fall into that. And the rivulets of sweat were just pouring down my back as I was fighting. I was using all my will to fight feeling this field of black nothingness with a black hole. And I thought, if I let go, I'm going to fall into that black hole. And finally, there came a point where I could feel my will was starting to cave in. And I asked the question, well, what if I would never leave this place of hanging out over this black hole? And somehow the thought of that seemed worse than meeting whatever was in there. And I thought, well, who am I without this helping game? And as I just let go a little bit, I began to feel like everything started to dissolve in the nothingness. And then pinpricks of light started to come in. And then it was suffused with this radiant light. And it was so bright. I actually opened my eyes to check if I could see this light, but no, it was only available with my eyes closed. And as I started to let go in this light, I became aware that this light that had a peace in it, a, a, a presence in it, a love in it, it was pervading the room I was in. And as it expanded, I realized it was pervading the village I was in. Eventually, I became aware that this peace, this light, is actually what pervades all of existence, all of the universe. Inadvertently, spontaneously, I fall into my own soul. And I realize that this that is my essence, my own soul, is connected to and part of the fabric of all of existence. Now, this was not a passing state of peace, like from one of my meditations, I've been meditating for 20 years. This is the direct realization that this that I am pervades all of existence. And I look back at my whole life and I thought, wow, what a, a, a crazy, what a crazy, you know, travesty, a cosmic joke you've played on yourself. All your life long, you've tried to do the right thing, be there for people, lift people up, care for them, serve them, just so that you could feel a tiny modicum of peace and a little bit of self worth and I realized that the peace that I was feeling could not be found through my actions on the outside. That the peace that I was seeking was here on the inside. It was shining as my own soul. Only I'd been looking on the outside to find that peace. That peace has stayed with me since that day. As one the countless gifts that my own human journey was. And there's the awareness that this that I am is connected to and part of everything. And all the dramas of life, all the ups, the downs, all the emotions that come and go, the life experience that come and goes, is all happening in this vaster context of feeling connected to all of life and feeling part of the fabric of existence. And this is the gift that is available to you. If you're willing to embrace your emotions and go into the core of it and keep 
welcoming and surrendering and welcoming and surrendering, eventually you will open into this vast boundless presence that is your own soul, that is your own essence. And you will find this peace, the passive understanding, that goes beyond the understanding of thinking mind, a peace that cannot come and go. Because where can your soul go where you are not? This peace is always here and actually always has been here. It's just that our mind took us somewhere away from this. And the journey is a method for you to go back inside, back home to the peace, the love that you came in as. And so I recommend if pent up emotions are starting to erupt, go someplace quiet where you have some quiet space, close your eyes and just embrace the emotion. Embrace the emotion, let it come and go even deeper. If you keep embracing it, you will find the peace that is inside of you. And I also recommend get on our website, thejourney.com, subscribe to it. Once you subscribe to it, you can get a free download of the book there. And also I've now recorded and other people in the journey have recorded 50 videos on Facebook to work with the different issues that we're all having coming up, first of all, during lockdown, and now as we're emerging from lockdown. And during this time, you need to be doing work to come home to a sense of wholeness inside. It's only from that place that you're gonna emerge with clarity and with a sense of purpose. But living in this morass of confusion and all of the input from the press and the news and all the all the violence going on and everything that's happening that's where we put our focus it's just going to whip us up into a frenzy of fear and instead use this time to invest in yourself to clear whatever blocks you whatever holds you back and in the in the journey book they can, you can, if you would subscribe, also get the process work that I underwent. Obviously, it's the latest, newest, uh, more used, most user-friendly process work, but it's a time for you to clear what you can and come home. And then in two weeks' time, you know, if you feel like, whoa, I really want to be like that one woman who shared, who said she's living in faith and trust and feeling at ease with herself and she's just allowing life during this corona time and lockdown and as she emerges from it if you want to be like her and really get the tools and dive in and truly clear whatever blocks you emotionally physically on any level of being and get this life-changing work then I recommend sign up now for the journey intensive. It's happening in two weeks time uh, and two weeks uh, in a fortnight in Europe. After that, it's happening. So it's on a different time zone in America and yet another time zone in Australia, New Zealand, so that people could have this in-depth live stream, two day immersion in this profoundly liberating and healing work and I really encourage you to use it and if you've already done the journey intensive do it again there's a recent price for those of you who would like to do it again I mean it wouldn't be amazing to have that huge presence flood your home as you're undergoing from nine in the morning till 6 30 at night on Saturday and Sunday the journey intensive that would be amazing we can all use this liberating work i mean i i get a when i'm on tour i get a journey process once a week when i'm on tour i never want to be so arrogant as to say i've got it all handled i know that there's more than one issue stored inside this body and i feel it's a huge gift to be able to clear whatever obscures me or holds me back on any level in life 
And so, Gabby, if you wanted to share anything else that was um, had, that people were sharing, this is that time, Gabby. It's, well, we just would be going backwards now. I think we're just covering the emotions. You know, somebody with saying that the family is is turning against her, and yeah. and three sisters having trouble with agreeing on how to care for their mom. Um, but this is all before we've done this. And so yeah. you really have people with you. And I feel like I, I just would love to share something that Mirella just shared here. And she said she had this experience that you've just shared here. Um, during the pilgrimage in um, Arunachala in 2011, and this silence and this peace, this love is always there, even in the middle of chaos. So thank you for making me experience this with the journey. And so um, the, yeah. there were no major other questions coming up. And I think everything that has come up could be dealt with by the exercise that we've done here. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, Morella, it just makes my heart sing to know that you're living in this peace and this love and that in doing the journey work, which is work that you did with your own self, that you found your way home to the love that you are. And my prayer for all of us is that we, all of us, fall in love with ourselves, with the peace, the joy, the freedom that is your nature, and that, that you'll be like me, that you'll do anything to clear whatever blocks you, obscures you, holds you back on any level of being, so you can live with this, in this love, as this love is an expression of your authentic, true self. So a heartfelt namaste, and I will be giving yet a totally different theme that we will work on next Sunday, same time, same station. We will focus on a different area that we need clearing and liberating in. And so we'll not only have teaching, but you know, roll up our sleeves and dive in. So please join me in this. Let your friends know about it. We'll post it. It'll be at 11 a.m. UK time next Sunday. Be there or be square. <laughs> and until then, a heartfelt namaste. And please share this with your friends, your loved ones. We all deserve to come home to the peace inside, especially during these times of craziness that we're going through right now. And a heartfelt namaste.